What's really good, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Weekly NBA Breakdown. It's your boy, Deuce, one half of the broadcast, boys. And now it's time to go coast to coast and check in with all 30 teams in as few words as possible. The Brooklyn Nets played two in a row at the Garden and lost both of them. The sag for flag is real. Captain Brunson called game versus Brooklyn, and the big cat continues to purr in the Mecca. Brotherly love is at an all-time low as the Sixers go to 2-10, but TikTok boy Jared might be a steal. Toronto are losers of seven in the row, and the King Slayer was far from impressed. The Bulls let up 49 first-quarter points to the Cavs in their first cup game. And believe land? They undefeated. They undefeated. The Pistons have seven wins already, which took them all the way till February last year. They working. The Pacers split back-to-back -back games with Miami and continue to float around 500 like the rest of the East. A damn near 60 ball for Giannis in Cream City, but at 4-9, and nine, the Bucks still ain't bucking. Final few seconds. No timeout from Doc. They're gonna, he's going to go with it. They got two to work with. Dame off the bounce against Brooks. Dame driving inside. Gets it to go. An in-season tournament win against the Celtics without Trey Young and Dyson Daniels in the depoy race? Okay, Atlanta. LaMelo dropped 30 balls in half of Charlotte's games this year. Hold that, Chandler Parsons. Coach Spo is making rookie coaching mistakes and Tyler Hero is the best player in Miami? What's going on? Orlando on a five game winning streak without Paolo and the Wizards have lost eight straight. The vibes are incredibly low in the nation's capital. In Denver, Jokic is the MVP, but Jamal Murray being at a UFC event the night before a 4 p.m. game in Memphis? Yikes. Julius Randle called game for the T-Wolves in Phoenix, and it was enough to make a grown man cry. OKC okay, got three losses on the year now, and two of them came after the Chet injury. They're going to be fine, but something to look out for. Portland mad at Zach Eady for blocking their shot when they're down 45, but that's not his fault that y'all got smoked. The Jazz beat the Mavs on a game-winning dunk by John Collins because Luka Doncic glitched in real life. A lesson learned in the Bay, do not ignore texts from Steph Curry and definitely don't shimmy in front of him at home. Clay, you know better than that. The Lakers are winners of five in a row. JJ got his first technical and LeBron James is out here dropping triple doubles like it's 2012. Clippers James Harden moves to second all-time on a three-pointers list but I agree with him. He should be number one. Steph Curry don't count. The injury bug in Phoenix got Devin Booker fighting for his life out here. The Aaron Fox dropping 109 points in 48 hours. Is he the most underrated player in the league? Clay went back to the Bay for the Mavs and played well, but accidentally poked a bear. The Rockets are 10 and four in the West? Say word. Finally for the Spurs, a 50 ball by Wemby, the same week that somebody said he doesn't impact the offense. Yeah, all right. We checked in all around the league, but now it's time for top of the top. Believe land. This is for you. Cleveland Cavaliers are 15 and 0, the best start by a team since 2016 Warriors when they started 24 and 0. The best offense in the league scoring 124 points per game on 52% from the floor. They're top 10 in defense too, which certainly is not bad. Now that's a recipe for success. So I take back what I said last week. These Cavs are legit, but NBA fans know the regular season is cool, but it's all about what you can get done in May and June. Time will tell, but Cleveland, enjoy the ride. Them boys is fun to watch. We all received the Shamber alert earlier this week when Shams reported that the NBA is considering changing the All-Star Game format. The new format would be a four-team tournament that would consist of three teams of eight All-Stars each, and the winner of the Rising Stars game being the fourth team competing, which I think is actually kind of cool. Adam Silver is desperately trying to find ways to make the All-Star Game more entertaining for the fans and the players alike. I don't think that the format is necessarily the issue, I just think that people don't take it seriously and we need to provide some stakes to this game in order to get people to take it seriously. I think the best way of doing that is going back to East versus West, let them play in their home jerseys because we all know that that should look fire. And lastly, the winner of the All-Star game should determine who gets home court in the finals. All these other bells and whistles, come on, son, we don't care. But I say that to say that at this point, I'm willing to try anything because All-Star weekend used to be something we all looked forward to. And hopefully we'll get there again. The City Edition jerseys have finally dropped. So it's time to tier rank these jerseys and see which ones are tough or rough. Let's get right into it and start with the New York Knicks. Now these Knicks jerseys are beautiful. I'm clearly biased, but I think people around the league are looking at these and being like, yeah, these are hot. I love it. Tough. The Minnesota Timberwolves. I kind of like what they're doing here with the two-tone icy white thing that they got going on. I want to put it in tough, but I'm gonna throw it in mid for now just because we got a lot of teams here. The San Antonio Spurs. I don't know what the hell these are. They look like something off the wall of a newborn baby's bedroom. Not for me. Rough. The Washington Wizards. No amount of City Edition jerseys are going to save the product that you guys are putting out there every day. So, sorry. Rough. The Golden State Warriors. They got that Chinese New Year vibe that they had going on a few years back. I like these. They're simple. They're pretty good. 
I'll throw them in the mid for now. Toronto Raptors. Now, I am a big fan of the cartoon dinosaur. Super throwback. Reminds me of the 90s. Reminds me of OG Vince Carter and them boys. I just think that they put the logo on a black jersey. Pretty boring. They didn't try too hard here. Again, I'm going mid. It's a high mid. Philadelphia 76ers. Very simple. Doesn't blow me away by any means, but it's not ugly. It's mid. The Detroit Pistons. No idea where this colorway came from. Maybe it's something from back in the day. Either way, it ain't working for me. Rough. Phoenix Suns. These are cool. Little purple orange going with their traditional colorway, but they got the font from like a 1830 saloon or something like that, you know, with the push double doors. Doesn't blow me away, but purple and orange. One of the tougher colorways in the league. It's got to go tough for me. Oklahoma City Thunder. Now, these are different. I haven't seen jerseys like this in OKC since they became a franchise. They're kind of tough. I like them. I'm going to go tough here. The Houston Rockets. Now, if you know, you know these are going to be a hood staple. These are really, really nice. H-Town. Tough. The New Orleans Pelicans. I'm assuming that your designer is as injured as your starting five is because this is rough. The Brooklyn Nets. They don't take any chances. They don't do anything too outside of the box. That black, gray, and white thing that they got going on over there in Brooklyn, they have no identity, respectfully, of course. But it's not bad. Mid. That's the whole point. The Denver Nuggets. They went with their classic rainbow colorway, and they reminded us about the elevation out there. It's okay, but it ain't rough, but it ain't tough either. The Indiana Pacers. Yikes. This one looks like a 2K creator franchise jersey that you just slap together to throw your players on. Not for me, rough. The Memphis Grizzlies. Now, this font is hilarious to me because it reminds me of Pimp My Ride back in the day. Remember Exhibit on Pimp My Ride? These, and for whatever reason, it's working for me. Tough. The Los Angeles Clippers. These do not blow me away at all. I think that they're ugly. They don't work. Steve Ballmer, you got far too much money. Hire a better creative director, my boy rough. Sacramento Kings. They went real simple here. I think they took it back to those Oscar Robinson days way back in the day. Nah. They're okay. Mid. Miami Heat. Brother, I can't explain to you how tired I am of hearing about Heat culture. It's not Heat culture. It's Pat Riley culture. If you got hired for a different team tomorrow, y'all would lose that culture and they would gain it. Cut it out. Rough. The Milwaukee Bucks. It's pretty clean. I like that blue and the cream always hits. Tough. The Utah Jazz. There's never been a franchise who's so painfully boring, who consistently puts out pretty fire throwback jerseys. And so Utah's a hard place to sell to anybody. But yeah, these are tough. The Chicago Bulls. The font and the colorway here just reminds me of just like a 1940s hotel lobby that wouldn't allow me in it. So I don't like it. Uh, rough. I hope you know what I mean by that. The Atlanta Hawks. And you know what? I didn't love these, but my boy Brody did. So for him, I'm going to throw these in tough. That one's for you, Luke. The Orlando Magic. I don't know what they were doing. I think they tried to make a San Antonio Spurs jersey, but threw their name and logo on it. It's not working. It's a rough for me, pal. Not even Paolo can make that look good. The Dallas Mavericks and the Icy Whites. Anytime you got Luka and Kyrie and some Icy Whites dropping 40 on your head top, it's a beautiful thing. The Boston Celtics. Nah. I don't even think y'all Boston fans like these because Boston Green is classic. It's iconic. For whatever reason, y'all got this like Volt hybrid nasty lime uh, highlighter green. That ain't working for me. Try again. Rough. The Cleveland Cavaliers brought out the Carolina Blue for no reason. But um, they're 15 and 0. I can't really say a bad thing about them. Tough. Portland Trailblazers. I feel like I've seen them wear this jersey before, and unless there's like some detail on the, the pattern on the jersey that I'm not seeing right now, this is just mid. Black, red, and white is always gonna be a nice colorway. The Charlotte Hornets. They're okay, they don't blow me away. LaMelo and Brandon Miller are balling out right now, but they've got better jerseys, so we're throwing this in the rough category. And finally, the Los Angeles Lakers. The purple to black gradient that they got going on with the pop of yellow, and the Lakers just won five in a row, and JJ's my favorite coach in the NBA right now. The king, this one's for you. Tough. Let me know if y'all agree with my rankings. All love top to bottom. You already know what it is. Peace.